get started. Um, we will be very mindful of everyone's time. We won't delay too long, but we'll probably start just a minute or so after the bottom of the hour. So uh, I see a whole bunch. Oh, everyone's jumping in now, which is great. I was going to start inviting people, but they're coming so fast I can't even do that. We have over 100 people registered for today's event, which is just phenomenal. Very uh, exciting. So I'm looking forward to this. This will be a good, uh, good conversation. Yeah, I'm too. I'm too. We'll get uh, just a minute to get kind of set up here. Um, we, uh, I'll give this warning once we officially start too, but there's a good chance we might go a little long. Um, <laughs> Fuji decided, uh, and I agreed that, you know, we used to have 90 minute webinars and it was just a worry that people couldn't spend that much time. So we actually uh, set this for 30. And then Grant and I started talking and then both of us were like, it's probably gonna go longer than 30. So if it does, um, we're recording today's session. And if you have to leave, I totally get it. That's what we promised you, feel free to, to take off anytime you need to. But we will send everyone a copy of today's recording too. So in case we do go a little long, you, you won't miss anything. Um, I think that's important. Is that your way of saying I'm long-winded, Michael? Definitely you, not me at all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like to tell stories. That's my problem. But hopefully, it makes the webinars more interesting. So we'll see. Yep. I like a good story. We've got just another uh, minute or so before we'll officially kick off. Um, more people are coming in, which is good. We're up to 13. Yes, Michael, oh. Grant, most of them registered for the first time. And uh, they'll need to have the plugin, download, go to webinar. Yeah. It might take a couple oh, minutes, yeah. but yeah, we can start on time, though. I mean, I, I myself did that uh, being the first. That makes total sense. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and hopefully, I'll share it correctly here. So, if I put myself. In I see email. your email. Okay. So. If I go there and change this to swap, now you're looking at the full screen PowerPoint. I see a galaxy. Yep. You see a galaxy? Oh, okay, no longer. Okay. I see oh, a PowerPoint. Wow. Wait a minute. That's really weird. Yeah. So, of course, I just covered up all my other screens, but that's all right. Okay. We'll wait one more minute and then we're going to go ahead and get started because everyone who came on time, we don't want you to waste your time. Uh, and as I said, we just got a lot to talk about today. Um, so I'll get started here in just a few seconds. I see a bunch more just hopped in. So appreciate you all coming. I know, uh, you know, the question everyone asks is, um, especially me, my background, I, I came from Microsoft. I'm like, why aren't you making this a Teams meeting? And uh, I always jokingly say, I don't know, I, I love Teams, <laughs> but uh, it is easy for us when we do registrations and stuff to use to go to webinar. So I know it's a pain, you have to load up the little client, you have to do some stuff, but I uh, appreciate everyone doing that for us. Um, we, uh, this is the end, uh, Grant, I don't even know if you know this, this is, and, and I may have my team now to help me with this, but I think this is our 16th webinar we've done this year. Um, so this has been an ongoing series, and this is the last one that we had scheduled. Now, that being the case, I've already been talking to customers that are like, could you please go deeper in this and do this? And I think we're going to add some more. It seems to be pretty popular. Um, but we're going to uh, uh, hopefully change it up. And this is the first one that we're having a guest speaker come on. Uh, people hmm. probably finally got bored enough of me that said, hey, we'd like to see someone else besides you, Mike. And so uh, that's what we're doing today. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and officially start us off. Uh, we're a couple minutes past, so I think it's good to get going. And let me get my uh, webcam screen out of the way here and put that over here. So welcome to a very long titled Acquire Enrich Analyze Data of Unmatched Speed with Encorda's Direct Data Platform. Um, this is a, as I mentioned, this is the end of a, a long series of webinars. They're always free that we've been doing from Fuji. And what we promise when we set these up is these are not sales seminars. These are really just to get into technical discussion. I think in the emails, I say we get two minutes just to tell you who we are and what we do. So that's what I'm going to do uh, here. We do have a, a guest speaker today, Grant Joseph. He's gonna tell you a little bit about himself. 
Um, and the way this is going to work today is I'm actually going to interview Grant. Now, I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, oh, they've got a script they're going to follow. And they're going to, Grant and I agreed right from the start, we didn't want to do that. Uh, we wanted this to be as spontaneous as possible. So there is no script. We did sit together for about an hour, and I wish we had recorded that conversation because it was a really good conversation. I, I, I have high hopes for today because I'm sure those same kind of topics are coming up. But I haven't told Grant what the, my questions are. I haven't told him what to say. There's no any particular step-by-step -step thing we're following. We're just going to go wherever this conversation takes us. Uh, and I think it will be a, a fascinating conversation. In addition to that, I'm encouraging everyone, use your uh, question section on your GoToWebinar and tee up as many questions as you have. If you ask it, I will make sure it, it gets presented. Um, we're not going to filter questions. We're not going to do anything. This is your chance to ask a really good expert on data and analytics and working with large databases, anything that you want. Um, so make sure that you utilize that. And I have two windows. You'll see me looking to the left and looking back to the right all the time because I'm checking for questions and, and uh, verifying it. Let me tell you real quickly about Fuji. Two seconds. We're a worldwide organization. We've got about 600 people. We are US-based, uh, US headquartered here in Dallas, Texas. We have offices down in Costa Rica, over in India, and you can read this as well as everyone else can. We've got a lot of uh, uh, amazing people on staff. We really focus on four key things, and that's it. Uh, we do uh, project engineering, product engineering, quality engineering, and we do a lot of low-code, no-code business process solutions. Just wrapping one up right now for a large Japanese chemical company, went really well. We do cloud advisory, cloud migration, managed services. We have a whole security group, a, a security operations center down in Costa Rica. So we're on the same time zone as the US. And lastly, analytics, data engineering, and data visualization. And this is a huge part of our business. That's what we're going to be talking about today. You don't see a lot of other stuff. If you come ask Fuji about, hey, I want an accounting solution or something, we're going to say, that's not our specialty. We don't do that. And we're going to point you to someone else. Uh, I think the mistake a lot of partners make is they try to do things that aren't, you know, in their swim lane, basically. Um, so that was my whole slide. I want Grant to quickly introduce himself, tell us a little bit about your background and a little bit about a quarter, Grant. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining, listening for to me today. Uh, a little bit about myself, I guess, personally. My wife and I, we just had our, our first kid. So uh, if you hear a crying baby in the background, it's because uh, little Samuel is sick for the first time. Uh, but I, I guess more to my professional background. Uh, so I, uh, I've been at Accorda for about a year and a half, uh, helping customers connect to and better understand their data. Uh, prior to my time at Accorda, I spent about six years at Tableau Software, where I would help customers of all shapes and sizes, anything from a commercial company to large enterprise, better see and understand their data. So uh, prior to that, I was an implementation consultant working with healthcare systems to help them better see and understand their uh, their complicated streams of revenue. Uh, so uh, I'm excited to be here today to talk with you about Encorda and, and why I think we're so special uh, and unique. But uh, uh, and hopefully, hopefully at the end of today, you can. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of an echo. Sounds like it's gone. OK, hopefully today you don't hear the echo, uh, but also leave your uh, learning more about Encorda. So fantastic. Uh, Sandeep, I'm going to turn it over to Grant because he'll be presenting from today. And I don't know, you know, like I said, we haven't scripted this out, but I do want to encourage Grant to show demos and go again, wherever this conversation goes, that's up to him. Uh, but yep. we need to grant him the presenter authority so that he can uh, uh, share his yep. screen. I want to uh, uh, talk real quickly about our discussion. I was fascinated, um, and we're just going to dive in. Let's just get into it. Uh, oh, I did want to mention this too, one last thing. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to go long today. We only scheduled for 30 minutes, and Grant and I talked an hour and could have kept going for another hour. Um, I don't want to kill the conversation if it's going well, but I also want to uh, be uh, responsible for the time we set expectations. If we do go long, and if you do have to leave, do not worry. We are recording today's session. Sandeep, we are recording, right? Just make an absolute sure that's the case. Uh, yeah, I see it says recording right now. So I will make sure, Grant and I will follow up with each of you and make sure you get a copy of today's recording. So again, if you have to bail or jump for any reason, uh, that's my fault. I didn't make it long enough. 
uh, but, but you'll be able to, to watch the video and uh, catch anything that we give along. Okay, so Grant, do you have a presenter access? Not that you need to present right away, but I just want to make sure you're, yep. you're good. Okay, good. Yep, good to go. I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to start with probably the, the question that's probably on everyone's mind. You were at Tableau. You, you were there for a really long time. Why did you jump? That is yeah. a great, great company, and uh, I know I'm, I've been a Power BI guy forever, but I love Tableau too, and uh, that's a that's an interesting career decision. So let's start with yeah. what were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really, really good question. So something, uh, and Michael, I'm getting a background uh, echo, so maybe if you don't mind, maybe there we go. Okay, uh, much better. Uh, so so why joining Corda from Tableau? Uh, it's a question a lot of people ask me, including including my wife, right? Uh, I think it comes down to what the fundamental mission of each company was. Uh, Tableau uh, was a fantastic company, is a fantastic company, uh, and they're really great at what they do, which is helping people better see and understand their data. Uh, and Quarter's mission is a little different, although we play within the same space. Um, and Quarter's mission is, is we're a data access company. We're, we're, we're unlocking comprehensive data access to our customers so that they can make data-driven decisions on all of their data. Uh, it really is as simple as that. Um, and, and I guess uh, during my time at Tableau, you know, I mentioned I, I saw a large, uh, you know, I got to talk with customers all the time about their analytics problems. Uh, and, and there was one thing that was consistent regardless of the shape or size of the company was the complexity of the source systems. Um, and, and that's something that Encorda uh, radically simplifies. Uh, the whole data pipeline, data engineering process uh, is not just simplified, but it, it's uh, you, it, they uh, Encorda augments end users with access to all the data. Uh, what I found at Encorda, uh, sorry, at Tableau is that customers were spending much more time in a data engineering step. So doing things such as aggregations, joins, uh, there's data preparation tasks, as opposed to finding that new insight. Um, I think it's like about an 80-20 split. So whenever I learned about Encorda, I got to trial out the software and, and I, I saw some really great potential in, in what we're doing. Uh, and and uh, since I've been at Encorda, I found that uh, that customers are spending much less time preparing their data for analytics and more time either driving analytics or actually doing doing their their day job, which is making data driven decisions. So yeah, I want to um, jump in on this because um, I hate and I apologize, but I just hate words like, you know, a whole lot of time or whatever. I want to quantify yeah. this deal. Yeah. You, you yeah. brought this up, right? That, uh, and I've seen this with my customers. It's like, hey, let's get into the analytics. Okay, we'll get back to you in a month or so once yeah. we reformat all our data. Why, yeah. Would, yeah. why would a company need to reformat? We, we talked about, you know, denormalizing data. Can you explain what that is and why customers even do that? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and maybe even to take a, a broader step back, uh, one thing that we we learn about here while we're at Encorda is the the history of databases, right? Uh, and, and the history of databases is a really long one, so I won't kill you with uh, the whole entire backstory. But effectively, in the 70s, right, the database was created and it was effectively optimized for inserts, data inserts. Uh, it wasn't designed for, say, analytics. Um, so um, you have your data stored in tens, hundreds, thousands of tables. Uh, there has to be a process for which you take your data from all of those various tables and denormalize it. Uh, you could call it flattening it or reshaping it just to get your data into an analytics ready state. Um, and that entire process is because the limiting factor uh, was a join, right? Uh, traditionally, you couldn't do joins across 10, 20, 30 tables uh, because the total in terms of query performance was way too great. Um, so the founders of Encorda decided, okay, let's let's not create star schemas. Let's not sidestep the, uh, the join. Let's embrace the join. Um, and so they effectively created a query engine that uh, can do nearly unlimited joins across your, your data. So for that reason, there's uh, you, you can query your data in normal form, um, which is just a fancy way to say we're, we're accessing all of your data. Um, and, and you know what, why don't I... Uh, I'm guessing that's the one that's causing the echo, my apologies, but I'll, I'll try to remember to turn myself off. Yeah, yeah I, okay. 
that uh, what you just talked about, I, I was just working with Salesforce. I was doing some analytics with Salesforce this last weekend. And nice. Salesforce had, and of course, Salesforce, interestingly enough, I think everyone might know this, just bought Tableau, right? They just purchased yep. it a couple months ago. And uh, I opened up the, uh, I was using Power BI again, because my Microsoft background, um, but there were uh, over 500 tables. I don't know how many joins there were, but it was a massive spaghetti that took me yeah. a week just to sit there and try to trace everything backwards to figure out where all these tables joined in. And, yep. uh, and you said this yep. before, right? Joins, very powerful in relational databases, but they're a cost when it comes to analytics. They take time, yeah. they take speed, they take processor, et cetera. And again, I don't want to generalize how much time, how much speed, what are, what are we really talking about when we talk about these? Uh, these okay. Things? Yeah, certainly. So I guess, I, so here I have a really great customer story and then maybe I can transition to a brief demonstration of actually seeing the, the data engine in action, but um, just want to check check some of my, my metrics here. So uh, Broadcom, which is one of Encorda's first customers, um, they, they, they embraced Encorda, uh, and it's been their only analytics platform for the what, last two years. Uh, a quote from their CIO is it, it used to take their IT department eight to 12 weeks to get a report from request to production, but with Encorda, they were able to do it almost instantaneously. Um, and so this is their quantified metric, not, not ours, but they were, uh, they achieved a 96% increase in speed to insight, uh, with four second data retrieval. So. Um, very, I mean, vast uh, increase in terms of their performance. Um, they, they were also able to um, reallocate a lot of their key resources that were historically just focused on managing data pipelines. Uh, they were able to, uh, to uh, reallocate those resources to focus on more value added data engineering tasks as opposed to just simply trying to keep the analytics lights on. Um, so. Just some, uh, just a quick customer story there, uh, as I think that really makes clear a lot of the savings in term of time that we're, we're providing for customers, but also uh, the costs associated with that too. Um, and so, and so you, in court is magic, and somehow it does this amazing process that makes everything run faster. Obviously, I'm not letting you get away with that. We're gonna get into how yeah, it does yeah. what it does. Do you wanna show yeah. us, or are you gonna show a demo of that? That yes, happen. exactly. That's okay. what. Uh, and so, uh, just want to make sure you can see my screen. Yeah. I yeah. So this is this. So this is great. Uh, so um, this is uh, effectively. I'm going to speak to just high level what Encore is doing here. So um, Encore connects to and ingests data from source. Uh, we load it into memory, which you can see here. We've connected to SAP. We brought in. So this is just for supply chain function. We brought in 23 tables. Uh, we've issued 20 joins from across those tables. Uh, we brought it in a memory, about 3 million records. Um, and, and what we're doing is we're able to effectively, I'm going to zoom out. We're going to view a diagram. We're able to query the data as it exists from within SAP. Um, so, so here you can see all of the tables, all of the complication, uh, all of the joins and how it's related. So uh, just a couple of the benefits to this approach as opposed to a more traditional one. Um, so obviously all of your data is brought into memory. So um, what that means is when there are change requests, say users want a new level of aggregation or they want to view a new column, um, it, it's all already in our platform. Uh, you don't have to rebuild a star schema. Uh, you effectively just toggle, okay, now I want this new value to be made available for analytics or to, to be shown to my end users. Um, but also, we're preserving transaction detail from the variety of these tables here. So for supply chain customers, for finance customers, uh, the implication of that is pretty drastic because no longer, no longer are you forced to have to aggregate away key details, say, uh, say in the invoice level or uh, transaction level. Uh, it's all already in the platform. So in court, it becomes that single pane of glass with all of your data in it. Um, so now I'll actually show you uh, the data engine in action, right? It's one thing just to be able to load data as it exists. Uh, obviously here, there's also a lot of complication uh, with SAP. Uh, I believe it's a German company. So a lot of the source columns, a lot of the source tables uh, look like they're, they're acronyms. We're, we're able to abstract away a lot of that complexity too. Um, so what I'll show you uh, is what it would look like to run a query against this model. Um, 
and we actually we have uh, some really uh, we have some pre-built SAP content that I can use to show you. Um, let me go to SAP. Just view the supply chain. This is just a simple dashboard that we're leveraging in our analytics layer. Um, and just to speak to our analytics layer for a bit, uh, you can use our analytics layer or Tableau or Power BI. Um, effectively, the the magic uh, or, or our core uh, technology could be leveraged in Tableau or Power BI. So if you would rather use those visualization tools, but um, ours is great too. So you want to filter to just view this one particular bike. Here are all the sales order details down on that transaction level. Now I'm gonna crack open this insight. This is our visualization editor here. Maybe we'll spend more time here later. But really what I wanna focus on is the, the intelligence on the back end, the, the query plan, right? Um, so here we can see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, tables behind the scenes that Encorda uh, already knew to query when rendering this visualization, right? Um, so, so just a, a brief look into, uh, or a quick look into uh, really our data uh, engine network and, and that we're actually able to do what we, what I, I said we can do. So. Um, let, me, let me make sure I got this right. I wanna summarize what I've heard. Um, yeah. And I, I really wanna make sure I'm getting this right. So I, I'm saying this correctly. Yep. In many organizations, it takes forever to get to the point where you can do analytics. And part of the reason, what I understand, is they have to change their existing database. What they took forever to build, right, and, and separating out in relational, building joins, building tables to make it optimized for SQL Server or Oracle or whatever, actually yep. is a negative when it comes to analytics because it adds cost and time and effort um, because the Power BI and Tableau and all those great, great tools have a hard time dealing those resources out as is. And what Encorda is doing, you're literally ingesting it all, the entire database as it is, is that correct? That, exactly. Tools, and that's what's giving you the speed and the size and the power. And, and give me an idea, are we talking millions of records, billions of records, trillions of records, what are we talking from a scale? Yeah, so, so that's a great question. Uh, we, have, we have customers uh, leveraging Encorda with hundreds of, of billions of records. Uh, so, um, there's, uh, I guess, complexity from um, the scale perspective, right? So we, we scale, I guess, up or, or we're very performant against large data sets, as well as being able to scale across the complexity or the, the disparate tables, databases that, that you're leveraging. So it could be SAP mixed with your MySQL, mixed with your, your standard SQL or Oracle backend database, um, right? We're, we're able to, uh, I like to say we're data agnostic. Uh, so we're able to connect to your data regardless of where it lives. And also one thing, oh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. oh one thing I would add too, um, so not only due to the, say, the more traditional approach of having to flatten your data out, there's obviously time and money associated with that, but you're also shaving away key details uh, from your, your transactions, uh, which forces a lot of users to, to not use analytics tools um, because they're forced to have to go back into, say, their ERP to find those transaction details. Um, so because we're preserving all that detail and all that access, it becomes your single pane of glass across a variety of your ERP or source uh, databases. So I want to remind everyone, please make sure you use that question if you have specific questions for Grant. I'm just kind of peppering them off what I, uh, uh, from our previous conversation, some of the things that we talked about. So because Encorda can ingest the database as is, companies don't have to denormalize. They don't have to pull their data back out apart to make it run efficiently from the query side of it. Yeah. So yeah. You're literally saving what, weeks, months? So uh, yeah, that's it. So the Broadcom example I mentioned, I, I, I talked about how we're saving time for just a net new insight. Uh, but, but then there's this whole other uh, thought in terms of like an initial implementation. Um, so um, because Encorda is so quick to, uh, or because our approach is, is so simple and there's no need to have to denormalize the data, um, implementations can be a matter of, of weeks to a month or so. Um, historically, or say for, uh, for in, in my past at Tableau, if we had an Oracle, say EBS customer approach us and would say, hey, uh, 
hey, we have our Oracle EPS data uh, that's living in Oracle. Uh, we want to get to an analytics ready state and use Tableau. Uh, my advice to them would be, well, uh, go, uh, go out, uh, build a star schema, implement a data warehouse or database, um, and come back and talk to me in a year from now. Because that's traditionally the amount of time that it could take to get to that analytics ready state. Uh, but because we're bringing the data as it exists, we're uh, simplifying that process. And in fact, we also have, uh, we're able to, to ship out what we refer to as data apps, um, which are effectively data accelerators for some of the name source systems. So uh, the SAP's, EBS's, Salesforce, uh, Workdays of the world, we're able to, uh, in fact, can I, uh, I think we have time. Michael, can I show just a quick deployment of a data app? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So let me share my screen. Let's see. Right there, I have a number of different environments up. So, um, you know, I, I think that this really makes clear uh, the time that we're, we're saving customers. Um, I, I've uh, spun up uh, our own Fuji demo environment. So you can see there's just an example dashboard here. Uh, but within our marketplace, this is where you can see our data apps that we have available to deploy. Um, again, the Oracle, SAP, Workday, Salesforce of the world, because we know that the common data model behind the scenes, we're able to ship dashboards and data models, which makes uh, time to insight e even quicker. So, so for instance, if we want to deploy this Oracle EBS uh, account payable data app, I can do so in a matter of five minutes or so. Um, and so uh, what, what we're doing is we're bringing in right, all of the data um, and making it instantly ready for analytics. Uh, and then we've pre-built content on top of the data models, uh, which are all easily customized. I, I like to say that our data apps serve as accelerators because no two, uh, say, Oracle environments are ever built the same. Um, so, so our data apps get you 70 to 80% of the way there. Um, I'm going to use some sample data. Um, You'll see here we're going to deploy this. Explain this to me. There's data connectors that connects me to all the different sources, and you hit all those major sources out there. But what you're talking about here is data apps, which is different. It's not yeah. only connecting, but it's understanding the schema ahead of time. So I don't have to, you know, build uh, translation tables. I don't have to rename my fields and stuff. That's all understood in the data yeah. app itself. Precisely. Yep. Yep. You've, you've nailed it. Uh, and so we have, we're able to then just ship all the intelligence, right? And we continue to add to these data apps. So uh, new new sources are being added uh, with each new release, uh, as well as as the concept of destinations too, uh, which maybe I'll, I'll talk to in a bit. But uh, not only is it core to making data super super available for analytics, but we're also able to integrate that data with other applications too, uh, which we have in our, our marketplace. So if you're say an Oracle EBS and a, a Blackline user, which is used within accounting, uh, we have some pre-built content to uh, do analytics, but also then send the data to Blackline. Yeah, I think you answered the nasty question that I had ready for you. I was gonna surprise okay. you, which is if I, I bought Tableau, if I bought Power BI, now you're saying I got to buy something else on top of it. I got to add in Corda, which obviously customers don't like because they've already made an investment. But what you're explaining yeah. here and what you just talked about, it's kind of, uh, I was trying to think of an analogy. Um, it's like the automobile, right? Great, amazing, revolutionized transportation. Well, that revolution happened again when GPS came out. It was additional right. functionality that made the automobile more automobile-y, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of how I think about it in quarter, right? So yep. you sit there and say, well, why do I need it if I have Power BI? And I just want to add in, um, or Tableau, you and I, and I'm going to lean on your Tableau experience for a second here. Power BI has, it's amazing. I don't want to knock it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but it has restrictions. There are, there's only certain numbers that you can pull in and they really try to uh, restrict because it's running through the web browser. There's only amount of data allocation and other stuff. So we run in Power BI, we run into this, you know, 2000 records on a query poll and we run into all these yep. other problems. If I am using Encorda with Power BI or Tableau, I can get around a lot of this stuff, right? Yeah. 
Precisely, precisely. So, and I know Tableau, I was asking you flat out, well, does Tableau have the same kind of record limits as, as Power BI? And your answer was no, it doesn't. However, there's a realistic usage kind of deal where it starts yep. slowing down the bigger things get and the more complicated things get where it just becomes unusable. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, we could, you could, in theory, bring in 100 tables into Tableau and issue 99 joints, uh, but but it wouldn't be usable, right? Um, or you could also try to render a billion records on a mark, uh, but Tableau is going to have to spin its wheels drawing each of those marks uh, because it wasn't necessarily built for that kind of detailed access. Um, and it's a fantastic tool. It's one of the best, if not the best, in terms of front end development, but uh, it's still not solving that, that back end uh, issue or problem that is consistent across organizations, regardless of size. And so, so Encorda is going to replace that. It's going to do all the heavy lifting of the data. It is still yeah. letting Tableau be Tableau and Power BI be Power BI. It, exactly. And in fact, here you can see so as part of this data app deployment, um, it's also now prompting me to, hey, you know, do you want to send this data out to Tableau, Power BI, uh, Excel Cubed, or, or even our Excel add-in? So for your Excel users, um, that, that might be doing, especially a lot of people in finance love to use Excel, um, you can take advantage of our superpower data models in, in those platforms. Um, but, but I just want to show real quick, we deploy this data app. Um, I have here a dashboard that's usable. Uh, it's uh, easy to use, right? Uh, built directly on top of Oracle EBS. Um, again, with those key transaction detail. Um, and just to, to show you, here we have this new schema that's been created. All the tables, all the joins, 4 million records, um, all, all here. So, so just within the last five minutes, you saw what it would look like to uh, deploy a data app. So, Is the loading time one minute, 43 seconds for 4 million records, right? Yep. Yeah, Something yeah. Power BI would keel over and die if you tried to do that. Right, so that's right. A great thing. We do have a question coming in. And again, I do want to uh, remind people, please ask questions in the, the questions section. Um, I also want to point out we're actually through our 30 minutes. So as I mentioned, oh, wow. we're going to keep yeah. going. And we're recording today's session. But if you have to leave, totally understand. I will send you a copy of today's recording so you don't miss anything. The question Rajesh has asked, it's a great question. How does Encorda work with Snowflake? A lot of Snowflake users out there. Uh, can you talk about Snowflake for a second? Sure. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and, you know, that's a question we get often because I feel Snowflake within the last three or four years has been so widely adopted in the market. Um, how do we work with Snowflake? Well, we can connect to it, right? So we have a, a native connection to Snowflake. And, and, and what we find is that we're, uh, and, you know, it's, this isn't maybe groundbreaking to say, but uh, customers are experiencing a lot of uh, runaway costs as, uh, in regards to the compute with Snowflake. Um, so when they're doing a lot of these transformations within the platform, it's it's uh, raking up the utility bill, right? And so um, within Encorda, you can connect to it, uh, bring in the data, and then apply all the transformations uh, within Encorda. So uh, there are many ways to answer that question, but um, just to answer your question, yes, we work with Snowflake and there can be some added benefit for offloading the compute on, into the Accorda platform. Yeah, and I, I'll mirror that. The more we talk to customers, more Snowflake keeps coming back again and again. Um, it's just really gaining some traction out there. So it's great that you, you plug into that. The biggest question, if I'm being an advocate for the customer here, which I am, this is great for huge enterprise accounts. Do I need Encorda if I'm a much smaller or mid-sized business? Sure. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. You know, I think that kind of kind of to what I'd alluded to before. Uh, you know, not only are we handling billions of records, so maybe within a small or medium-sized business, it, it may be in the millions of records. Um, but th they're still faced with the complexity of the source system, right? Um, and so within a small to medium sized company, they probably have less resources to dedicate to the traditional type of data pipeline, right? Um, and effectively what they're having to do for their source system is unravel this complexity, right? Um, say compare your largest Oracle EBS account to the smallest 
they still have the same tables that are are generating data on the back end, right? Um, sure, the, the the height of each table might be different, but this complexity still persists. So, um, and then also, you know, and I keep just kind of referencing this, but it's true. Um, you know, even small to medium-sized businesses need access to transaction detail. Um, uh, and then also there's another added benefit, which I haven't even mentioned, but we're also able to ref, uh, refresh our data lightning quick. So near real-time data, uh, a small to medium-sized benefit could benefit from that too. Um, yes. Sorry, I take myself off mute. So again, real-time, real quick, we're talking seconds, we're talking milliseconds, what are we talking? So, so minutes, uh, probably every five minutes or so, especially from like an Oracle backend, and, and really it will depend. Uh, but, but we're able, like, for instance, we've seen a customer, uh, Comcast, uh, within their finance department, they were using the legacy OBIE -E platform, um, so Oracle Analytics on top of Oracle, and they were historically only able to refresh their data, I believe, is once every four hours. Uh, which for their finance department, especially when it came to month end, was a uh, was a real drag, right? Um, finance users couldn't necessarily use the analytics because, uh, especially at month end, because records are updating so quick, but the analytics couldn't. Um, so um, with Encorda, they were able to refresh their dashboards, I believe it was every 10 minutes, uh, which made the month end process uh, go much, much more seamless uh, at Comcast. They were saving you know, hours a day, as opposed to uh, right having to go into the manual process and go into the source system just to find the transactions because of the uh, issue with the data latency. We never talked about this. This thought just occurred to me, though. Disparate backend data systems. Can I hook to multiple disparate systems at the same time? Yes, you can. Yeah. So, uh, regardless of source, once it's brought on our platform, you can you can do uh, as many, just about as you you could imagine. Uh, I just helped a customer, a, a small, uh, kind of a medium-sized customer, um, prove out the value of Encorda. Um, so before they even bought, we partnered with them to and set a list of objectives. Um, and we were able to connect to six disparate ERP systems. Uh, and for this particular customer, it was a manufacturing use case. So they were able to um, better understand inventory and product or, or really part flow from uh, from receiving it to actually building it into its final product because of the transaction detail access from the six disparate systems. I may get myself in trouble here. I'm totally serious when I say this. So I'm wondering if I should even ask this question. So I'm gonna ask. Bring it, bring it on, I bring it on. on Power BI to do multiple disparate data systems, you have to go to the pro premium package. You have to pay the extra okay. amount in order to yep. do that. If I did all that through Encorda, would I still have to pay the pro premium? Or is that a um, So are you, okay. Yeah, I could see why you might get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. But it is so, a In other words, did all that front loading happen before it gets yeah. to the Tableau or the Power BI? Yeah. Yeah, because then then Power BI is, is the way effectively Power BI or Encorda just looks like a uh, Postgres database to Power BI, so wow. it'd just be one connection. So um, I didn't know that about the, uh, the extra charge. And to get me out of trouble, uh, since I'm an 18 year veteran of Microsoft and I don't want to hack Microsoft off at me. There's a lot more that Pro and Premium do yeah. besides that yeah. one thing, but it just dawned on me if it's front loading it, you you could actually uh, get to those uh, multi backend databases, which is great. You know, you merge with a new company and all your stuff is in Oracle, and you just bought a company where it's all in SQL Server. Now you got to kind of right. them together and make them work as one. Um, that's awesome. Uh, all right, so uh, we're way over time, but uh, yeah, we, we kind of want to think about this in terms. So we know from there's a, the cost savings, the speed to get to analytics is a huge thing. The data connectors that we talked about where the schemas are already kind of figured out, you don't have to do all that manual work, huge amounts of tables, much faster access. And then more importantly, what you talked about, the refresh rate is, is yep. significantly higher. What yep. haven't we even talked about? What other amazing cool features have we not even brought up yet? We may have two yeah. multiple webcasts is kind of where I'm going with it. 
Yeah, sure. Um, so I think that one piece that we we really only talked about was analytics, right? And obviously we're an analytics platform, but our unique approach makes this data also instantly available for, so I, I referenced integration with other applications. So one really exciting partnership we have is with Workday Adaptive. Adaptive customers are having a really tough time sourcing data from say Salesforce, NetSuite, Oracle EBS and bringing it into the platform. Um, and Corda serves as the analytics layer as well as the harmonization layer. We're preserving key details. We're sending what needs to be in adaptive. We're sending it there. Uh, but we're also, when users have second, third level questions, they're then using Corda's analytics layer. Um, and then also there's an AI ML component too. So we have customers that are leveraging our super power, supercharged data models across a variety of their source systems to, uh, we have one uh, bank, Redstone Federal Credit Union, I guess they're a credit union, but they're using Accorda to determine loan default risk. Uh, and they're taking inputs from, I believe it's their loan origination system, their credit system, flat files and something else. Um, I forget the entire story, but then they're able to take all of the, the richness of the data from, and at the transaction detail from those four systems, and they're, they're creating a, uh, uh, what is it, the credit default risk, uh, or maybe, yeah, uh, scenario with AI and ML models. So supercharging their data science team with access to that detail. Remind me later, I, I'm totally serious, I have two credit unions I'm working with right yeah. now. Oh, nice. Okay. Their yeah. proprietary information, but I'm sure they would be fascinated to know about that. Yeah, yeah. I've already got myself in trouble. I'm I'm just gonna jump off the uh, the deep end of trouble. Um, this is my opinion, but I'm I'm curious, especially again with your ex Tableau experience. One of the things I've talked about with with Power BI, you mentioned that in Corda, the real power is analytics. We haven't even gotten much into the analytics side of it. Power BI um, serves a fantastic role for Microsoft. Obviously, it does great analytics. But really what it is on the big schema, it's a report right. It's a yeah. giant report system for Microsoft. And the yeah. question when people told me about Tableau being bought by Salesforce, my first yeah. reaction was that makes sense because they need a report writer. The reporting out of you know Salesforce is yeah. not yeah. good at all. My worry is both for Power BI and Tableau, that need will eventually encompass and maybe even pull or distract away from the analytics. I'm not saying that yeah. Microsoft and Tableau are moving away from analytics, but it does serve that other half. You guys are purely on the, the analytics side and we yeah. didn't have a chance to show some of the cool features and some of the cool controls. Does it work similar if I'm building the dashboard similar where I drag and drop controls and- yeah. It's very, very similar. Um, I, I could do a quick two minute demo. Is that, is that, yeah. okay, let's just and do that. What did say make sense or was that totally ridiculous? No, I, I think it, it, it makes sense. And, you know, it makes sense to, you know, use Tableau for everything if you're using Salesforce for everything, you know. Uh, but I think the uh, reality is there, are very, there aren't a lot of customers uh, whose data is all coming out of Salesforce. Um, and, and so, Therein lies the issue of the data source complexity and and the the you know process you have to get to get to that analytics ready state. So so I just I'm going to use the same environment. Um, so I should probably mention this. This is complicated, right? This this is the physical layer, the schema view. I could build content off of this, uh, but it's going to be a mess because we brought in every single table. Every single, uh, every single column, you know, and, and it might not even make sense to an end user from the source system. So we have a, a what's called a business schema. This is, a, I think of this as the bridge between people that intimately know the data source and then the people that are business users that know the data. Um, this is uh, effectively just referencing the, um, the physical schema. There's no load and reload. It's, it's like, think of it as a virtual window in a, that, uh, physical schema where I can rename values. I'm also getting lineage because I can see where it's coming from. Um, this is just a simplified view to build content on, uh, which could come from a variety of sources. But uh, you didn't even ask me about that. Uh, our visualization builder, right? Um, we have ability to build just about any kind of visualization you may want to build. Um, I'm going to start with just a, a simple aggregated table, uh, and it's all drag and drop. So say I want to 
look at our, our vendors across their different orgs, their respective amount, let's say amount paid uh, across the different periods that we're, we're working in, right? Um, all drag and drop, built out a quick, just aggregated view um, all on the fly, right? I could add this to a dashboard, uh, but again, I do wanna hit on the query plan. Um, I haven't had to worry about the complexity of the source system. Um, I have access to all the relevant data, any record, any column that could be used for analytics, all, all here. So um, made that quick because I know we're, we're low on time, but uh, the, the uh, visualization interface is, is easy to, to use and build with. No, that's cool. One of the things that I know a lot of the uh, programs like Tableau and, and Power BI are doing is supporting things like our statistical build your own yep. graphic stuff. Can I do that? Yep. Of course, I can do that. You know, within Cord on the back end and Tableau and Power BI on the front end. Uh, but is there any native support for that inside of Incorda now? Yes, there is. Yeah, and and you can use your own. Uh, you can use your own Spark instance too if you want. So uh, it, it's we're, we're flexible. Very cool. Okay, we we did go way over. <laughs> Fifteen minutes yeah. over. You said we were. Well, make sure we everyone has a chance to ask any other questions. If you do, please type them in, and we'll make sure we get those answered before we close out. Um, I, I want to kind of wrap up and just say, first off, thank you, Grant. This was awesome. I, 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 every time I talk to you, I learn something totally new. Uh, and as I just mentioned, I, I have two customers I need you to immediately come help me with. I also want to make sure that, that people on this call, 30 minutes is not enough time to do justice to this. And I'm sure a lot of them are talking about, well, that's great, but my world is this way or that way. So um, Grant and I talked literally just before we turned on the, the webinar and said, if anyone would like us to come out and talk to you about your specific things and show you a, a demo uh, and spend a little more time on your particular instances, um, we're available to do that. Uh, I will follow up. We won't annoy you. We won't uh, badger you or anything else. Uh, but I do want you to know we are more than happy to either virtually or if necessary, physically come out and sit down with you and talk about your data and your environment and just show you what it can do. I, I, I have seen uh, the demo a couple of times from, from other people. The first time I saw the important demo, I didn't get it at all. I literally walked out of the meeting. I was like, I'm just not 100% sure what it does. When I sat down and talked to you, it all became crystal clear. And I think when you see the thing hitting against millions of records and in seconds coming back and refresh, it's just amazing. So the, a better job of explaining this than us just trying to explain and talk about, oh, it's really fast. Well, that doesn't mean anything, but when you see it, you know, we, we understand it. So my question to you, kind of just as a last wrap up, anything else we need to know about Incorda? Anything else that you want to bring up before we kind of close out today's session? Yeah, um, really at this point, uh, not much else. Well, so maybe I could plug, I, I am doing, a, so if you're within FPNA function or you're looking to improve your forecast accuracy uh, within your finance function or just enterprise planning function. I'm doing a webinar uh, next week on that topic. Uh, uh, I could provide a link or you could, I'd say just generally go out to our website where you can learn a lot more about Incorda. Uh, and then, Every attendee, and I will attend myself, I didn't know you were doing that. That's totally yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. And then also, uh, yeah, reach out, you know, uh, maybe I'm sure as follow up, um, we can send out some of my contact information uh, or reach out to Michael and, and I'd be happy to chat. Yeah, you guys, we were talking about, uh, we're going to try at Fuji, we're going to put this up on a brand new YouTube channel. Uh, does Incorda have a YouTube channel or you got other stuff? Yeah, yeah. yes, we do. Uh, it, it's uh, it's more quick snippets. Uh, well, yeah, we do have a YouTube channel. Check it out, like and subscribe, right? Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, that's not as much of my, my world, although I I think I've recorded some videos for it. Uh, but yeah, that, that would be a good place to, to also learn about Incorda. And we have some partners, PM, uh, I forget, but uh, but if you look at Incorda on YouTube, you could find some really great content out there. So. Uh, we, will, we will put all that in on the follow-up. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna wrap up today's session. I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, we're going to send you probably tomorrow, just because there's a lot going on right now. Uh, but I'll send you an email with the link to today's recording, with the information for um, our previous webinars, with the information for Incorda's previous webinars, 
our contact information. We would love to just sit down and talk with you again, not high pressure. There's no expectation. We'd just love to hear what you're working on, what you're doing, answer any questions. Um, we'd love to show you a demo, a, a real live demo where you spend a little more time. Um, so you'll have that option. And then again, if, if tomorrow you wake up and there's a question that you wish you would have asked, you're going to have our contact information. Just fire it back. We'd be more than happy to uh, uh, you know, follow up an email and, and cover anything we, we haven't covered already. Um, that is it. I, was, this is, I had a list of five things I was hoping we'd talk about. I think we talked about all five. Grant, I appreciate it. I know you've got a sick wife and a sick baby, so you're you're my hero for doing this. Um, I think if we get good feedback from people, maybe we'll do another one. Uh, maybe drill down even further into some of the analytics side and some other uh, cool information. Yep. Yep. Uh, bring it on. Before we close it out. Nothing else. All right. Well, I appreciate it, everyone. Uh, look forward to that email coming tomorrow. Uh, I see we have a question. Oh, we do have a question. Thank you. Uh, we're getting an error while I'm trying to open my report in Encorda. That may be the reason. Okay, I'm not sure that's a question. Uh, I don't see any of that. You actually, you can turn on your microphone. I think we can allow you to turn your microphone if you want to provide more uh, detail onto that question. Sandeep, can he turn on his microphone or do we have that turned off right now? Yeah, hi, Michael. Hi. Yeah, I'm working uh, in an organization. We are using Incorta small size cluster. Uh, we are uh, built a report. Like uh, after one week, uh, I'm trying to access that report, uh, but I'm getting an error like uh, uh, undefined ID. When I'm trying to open that report, it is uh, giving me this uh, error like undefined ID. Uh, at that time, uh, I send a uh, mail to Incorta team okay We're still well, waiting uh, for the reply. okay well i think maybe you know it might be difficult to troubleshoot on this call but i think that my question to you would be is it built off of a business schema yeah um, and and i would uh i would make sure that has anything in regard to the physical schema or the business schema has anything changed as far as the the values or any of the, the naming conventions yeah. Uh, something has changed uh, because if so, I would I would recommend. Um, so more than likely, what's happening is the report is trying to reference a name that's changed um, on either the, the physical schema or the business schema. So I, I would look into that. Um, and may, maybe uh, I, sorry, I don't know who asked the question, but you could also uh, reach out to me individually, um, and I'd be happy to help maybe troubleshoot or point you in the right direction. Yeah, I've got his information in the, okay. the chat, so I'll go ahead and forward that, and and we'll we'll follow up, make sure we get the information. It sounds like he's already logged it within Corda, uh, but that what okay. you just said makes sense, right? If you changed part of the schema, the naming convention, the query now can't find it, didn't update, or something yeah. like that. I'm wrong. That's a good place to at least start looking um, to find yeah. out what's throwing that error or not. Um, but we'll follow up on that and make sure that we uh, uh, get yeah. you an answer in some way, shape, or form. Okay, that is it. I appreciate it, everyone. Again, expect that follow-up email probably, it might be late today or early tomorrow. You'll get all that information. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again on another uh, Fuji webinar. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me on. Bye. Bye.